guys, it's Megan. Um, today I'm going to do a quick varnish tip video. Um, I'm certainly no varnish expert, but I'm going to share with you some things I've learned along the way from what I've done and what I've done wrong <laughs> to maybe help you not do the things wrong that I did wrong. Um, so I'm going to be using Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish and Minwax polycrylic. I've used both. I like both. So I'm just going to show you kind of a comparison of the two um, and tell you why I like this one just a little bit better. Although Liquitex is, is definitely a great um, varnish to use. So all my kiddos are up because I wanted to do this video during the daytime when I had some good light. So we're just going to kind of see how it goes. I have one trying to grab a TV, <laughs> which is why I usually do these at night when everybody else is asleep. Okay, so I watched a bunch of varnish videos before I attempted to varnish myself, and I still kind of ran into a couple snafus when I started trying. So I just wanted to share a couple of those with you. Um, this was one of the first ones I did. I, this is done with a Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. Um, and you can see brush strokes in there. You can see the ridges. I have paint on my hands, sorry. Um, but you can see the ridges and there's just some texture there that I wasn't super happy about. I don't mind it as much on this one because this kind of has some interesting texture um, to the paint. So, but try number, I'm not sure what. Um, this is also Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish and after some trial and error, I figured out how to get a smoother finish without those brush strokes and ridges. Um, so I'll show you that one again with the, it's mostly just ridges. There's some brush strokes in there, but those ridges are what I really did not like. Um, so I'll show you what I did wrong and then what I did right. This is, this one was done with the Minwax Polycrylic. Let's see if I can get a good, there we go. And that was a really smooth finish. I had already figured out how to eliminate the ridges from the Liquitex when I started using the Minwax. So, um, it is, it, well, it goes on much smoother. It's a little bit thinner. I know some people put some water in their Liquitex just a little bit to thin it out. The polycrylic is a bit thinner, so that might be part of it, but it, it does go on a little smoother. But there we go. They look, here, I'll put them side by side. Where's my, there we go. Put them side by side so you can see. See if I can get that to, there we go. Okay, I, I don't juggle, so. Let's see if I can get, there we go. Them both to shine, okay, so. Comparison side by side. I don't notice that much of a difference between the two. So. All right, so let's start. The first thing I'm gonna do um, this one had silicone in it, so I'm going to show you real quick what I do before I varnish it when I use silicone. Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to use some 91% alcohol, just barely dampen a paper towel with that. And then I go over it just real quick. And it does, you can see it picks up a little bit of paint. Um, one person I have seen said that their painting smeared using alcohol. I have not had that problem, but I'm certainly not. Excuse me, one of those people will say, well, it hasn't happened to me, so um, I listen when somebody says something's happened to them, so um, might be something you want to be a little bit cautious of, maybe do a little tester in a corner or something first. Um, I know one of the techniques people have talked about is using, um, 
kind of powder? What did they say they use? Not talcum powder. Um, the powder, I'll put it in the description box. I'll remember as soon as I'm done recording. Um, that they dust it and that picks up the silicone, they said. Um, that's not something I want to do just because if I can avoid it because um, acrylics are um, porous so I really don't want to add um, dust it with a powder even though you're going to wipe it off just because I know some of it has to be getting absorbed into the pores of the paint so that's just something I don't I don't think I would want to use but as you can see I am picking up some paint I'm not getting any smearing, so. Okay. I went over that a couple times. And I'm good with that. I think I'll use. That dry. Okay, here's my brush. I'll show you that. Let me show you against white real quick. Here's the brush I use. Um, Kind of a small brush for some of the paintings but I don't mind I don't mind it doesn't take long anyway um, and I find it kind of relaxing so it doesn't bother me that I use kind of a smaller brush but this is a one inch master's touch um, synthetic flat brush and I really like it for this I will link in the description bar as well um, a video from Andrea Mercier she uses a, a damp sponge and I believe this is the, I think this is the one she uses. Um, I'll link the, the video though. She uses a sponge to put it on. And that looks like a really great option also. Um, I have not tried it, so I can't say much about it. Let me try and get the lid off my Liquitex. There we go. I didn't bring anything to pour it onto. Okay, just a second, guys. Pause the video. I'm going to go get something to pour this onto real quick. Okay. So, I'm going to pour some on a plate here to use for this. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I was doing wrong that created those ridges. Because everything I saw, the videos I saw, said do not go over an area more than once and don't over brush or it can cause cloudiness in um, the varnish. Okay, and there are the kids. I'll be back. Okie dokie. Um, so, he said don't overbrush, it will cause cloudiness, just go over an area once. And all these people were just doing these beautiful one strokes and getting a beautiful varnish. Well, I was doing it, and you don't want too much. 45 degree angle is what I heard several times, and it's kind of what I do. Let's see if it does it. Ah, and I'm not getting... Okay, let me try because let me put a little bit more on there okay and then see where the two meet you get these ridges I'm gonna go around and see if you can see on the camera I can go a little closer let me get a little closer here okay so right here where you have that white it's a little bit thicker at the end of the brush stroke where it kind of seeped out from the side of the brush just a little bit so and I was just kind of leaving that because I didn't want anything to get cloudy but I'm gonna do this real quick when I did it again I just quickly went back over focus camera and just really soft so I'm not really applying anymore I lost my there we go I'm not applying anymore necessarily I still have some on my brush but usually I don't because I usually finish all the way down until there's nothing left on my brush so I'm not really necessarily putting any on I'm just kind of knocking down that ridge let me do that again over here 
Okay, and maybe if you're better and you have a softer touch than I do, or you're loading the brush better, you won't get that. But I did, so there we go, just knocking that down just very softly. It's hard to do looking through a camera. Okay, there we go. So very softly, not pressing down, um, and not really adding any more. I'm just, just a minute, Toby. I'm just knocking down those ridges so there's no texture. And then I just go in one direction. Okay, and what I what I would do is if I was doing this without showing you, say I'm starting, I go all the way down till I notice there's no more gloss and I turn my brush over and continue. And I will do that all the way across going in one direction. And see there I'm getting the ridges. I'm going a lot faster than I normally would if I was just doing this without trying to hold a camera. And I'm gonna and I have a ridge here, so I'm just gonna knock that down. And that's what I did on the one I showed you, and I didn't have any cloudiness or ridges. Okay, and then I'll let that sit. I'll finish this off camera, but I let that sit for a couple hours and come back. And then I'll do a layer going this way. And I'll probably do four layers. One going this way, the next going this way, one more this way, and one more that way. Um, that way, if you, you know, missed a spot, it picks up those missed spots and also just gives it um, a really good, really good coverage and really good shine. So I'm going to finish this one real quick. And because I don't have two varnish brushes, which I probably should, I'm going to finish this one, rinse my brush, and then I'll come back and show you the um, Minwax Polycrylic on this painting. Okay, so I will be back in just a minute. Okay guys, I am back. My brush is clean. Um, open my Minwax here. I guess I should have done that off camera. So even have to sit through this part, but that's okay. Take me two seconds. Okay. I like the polycrylic a little bit better. It's a little bit smoother going on. I'm gonna stir it a little bit. Do this. Okay. Um, if you can see, probably not. But the Liquitex is on here. I'll pour just a little bit. Let's see if you can see it. Okay. It's pretty thick. And it, it's not gonna run much. Can you see that? Probably not. But you have to take my word for it, I guess. It's it's pretty thick, and if I pour it on there, it doesn't. And then put the plate sideways, it barely moves. Here's the polycrylic. I don't want to put a bunch of bubbles in there, but it's it's quite a bit runnier. Not really runny. It's a lot thinner. So um, it makes it a little easier to apply. Like I said, I know people add some people add a little bit of water to the Liquitex. To thin it out a little bit, but um, that's not something I have tried or done at this point. Okay, so I'm going to show you most of this one. I'm not going to do the whole thing on the video. Or maybe I should do this one. This one's a bit smaller. I think you're going to be able to see it on the dark better. Let me do this one. I think you'll be able to see it on here. Okay. So I'm just going to dip it in the Minwax and then I just brush it, the excess off. And then just like I did the other one, about a 45 degree angle, I'm going to lightly, I'm not putting a ton of pressure on there. Uh oh. It's okay. Somebody is tired and learning to walk. He's pretty much got it down, but he falls sometimes, and that makes it bad. Okay, so, and like I said, this also says not to overbrush. 
um, or it'll call, cause cloudiness, and that's about as much as I'll do. I will sometimes go over it a second time if I see I have a little bit of buildup, or it's, um, you know, the brush wasn't as saturated as I got down further. So right here it started getting a little less saturated, so I'm just going to go up. So, um, but this one I have never had the ridges like I do with, with um, Liquitex. And I know you probably can't see me on the video, but I'm kind of leaning down to where the light is shining off of this. That's why I really like to varnish um, in a you know, really bright light because I can see where I've been and where I haven't been. And like right here, I can see that there's a little bit more buildup. So I'm just gonna go back over that. And then I do the sides. Make sure you get this little corner here. And I, like I said, I can't say, you know, if my learning curve was all with Liquitex because I had figured out how to get a pretty smooth finish with that before I tried min, um, the Minwax or, um, or it was just that much easier to get a smooth finish with it. I'm not sure. I do know it's easier to get a smooth finish with it because it, I don't have to be as fussy. I don't have to be as careful. And they come out beautifully, as you can see from that one. I showed you it's just a, a very brush stroke free smooth finish neither one of these varnishes I'm gonna do the corners real quick have a UV protection though um, Liquitex makes one with a, a UV protection I believe it's their orange label um, I'll double check that I believe that their orange label one has a UV protection um, I'll edit at the end and let you know if I'm if I'm incorrect. But, uh, okay. So you can hear me over the dogs. That's all there is to it. The same for this. Um, I'll let it sorry. <laughs> I will let it sit for a few hours and then I'll come back and do um oh. I'll let this sit for a few hours and then I'll come back and do a second coat this way, a third coat this way, and a fourth coat that way. Um, so anyway, that's it and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.